This is my Magic 8-Ball. You may notice it's not like any other 8-Ball you've seen before. Most 8-Balls give you useful advice like maybe or try again later, but this will tell you all of your intrusive thoughts bouncing around in your head. Contact or Craigslist. It's like a normal 8-Ball, but with extra chaos. You're probably wondering, why would you make such a thing? Well, I was sitting at my desk, bored, trying to come up with something to build. When I reached over to one of these things, the outcome was predictable. And that's when it hit me. Let's make it unpredictable. Currently, every time that you shake the ball, it gives you yes, no, maybe, try again. But with the power of electronics and code, we can make a fifth option, which is just a pre-generated list of actions to be displayed and obeyed. So, what do we need? We're going to use this ESP32 C3 Mini because I like the small form factor and let's be honest, it was just on my desk at the time. A 1.3 inch OLED display to make sure in any light condition you can see the randomness. Then we're adding in a shock switch, a BMS and a boost converter, eventually. For a power source, we'll be using vapes. I head over to my local vape store and ask if they had any discarded vapes yeah, lying around. Yeah, just any of them. Yeah, them. Awesome. awesome. Thank you very much. Vapes secured. Each of these disposable vapes contain gold, or in our case, a 3.7 volt rechargeable lithium battery, which when stepped up is perfect for what we need. I designed this in FreeCAD because Fusion 360 kept asking for money, like a debt collector. 30 minutes later, after doing what felt like CAD surgery with oven mitts on, I had my orb. Wow! And so I sent it to the printer, and the orb emerged. I could smell the potential. Possibly the fumes. Here's the code magic. You smack the orb, get a new prophecy. Sometimes insightful, sometimes threatening, always unhelpful. It sort of works like your brain. If your brain only worked when I smacked you in the back of the head. Now that I had all the pieces, it was time to bring it to life. First part is breaking off all the supports. Then it's taking out some sandpaper and making sure that it's all smoothed down and doing one rough alignment check. After that, it was time to apply some coats of paint. Of course, matte black. Selecting a suitable battery from the ones I'd harvested earlier. I then tack some wire onto those terminals. A lot of people will tell you have a fume hood or anything like that. I prefer to inhale the fumes directly. I then lightly hooked up my BMS, making sure not to screw up too badly. What the and disaster. Because of this. Because About now is when I realised that I had actually purchased the wrong part. I got a step down, got a step up. Instead of buying a step up, I had purchased the step down. And on top of that, I realised I had another problem. Shit. It turns out I forgot to put in a hole during my CAD modelling for the charging port. But it's nothing that a tiny saw and a little bit of sandpaper can't fix. Look at that. Perfect. Unfortunately, that's all I could do the first day. I had to wait for my boost converters to arrive in the mail. Lucky for me, it only took seven days for them to arrive, so I was ready to keep going. After a quick solder of the battery terminals back into the BMS, I was able to test that the charging worked. And it worked. Red means charging, blue means fully charged. Then I added some wires into the output of the BMS, ready to go to the boost converter. After taking a reading from my multimeter, I could see that it was outputting 12 volts. Not ideal, since we're looking for 5 volts, but this is an easy adjustment. Bringing it down to a suitable 5 volts, it was ready for testing. After testing it on the breadboard circuit, success. Putting in a new C3 and wiring it all together, it looked great. 
This is my favorite part. Yeah, that's nice. The best thing about glue, hot glue specifically, is it's non-conductive. So really just get it in there. It doesn't really matter. I mean, shit, I don't care. While you're at it, uh, hot glue your finger. Um, it's a good thing to do. It makes you stronger and better, and I think it's actually a cure for a lot of diseases. So after using enough glue to stick myself to a wall, I had secured the electronics. And you guessed it, I used even more glue to seal the shell. After making sure it was nice and smooth, done. Finally it was complete. So yeah, this thing, it's trash. It's a garbage orb and I wouldn't make it again unless someone paid me in vape batteries in real life. But you know what? I had a ridiculous amount of fun building this. Like, way more fun than any person should have hot gluing batteries into a plastic sphere. This is my first YouTube video and I have no idea what I'm doing. My camera presence is that of a wet napkin, but maybe if I keep doing this I'll get slightly less awkward and slightly more... Uh, this? So if you like chaos, maybe some inventions, or you just want to watch someone figure out something in real time, consider subscribing. But mainly I'd like to hear a comment with advice, or even ideas of what to make. Or don't, I can't stop you, I'm just a guy with a prophecy orb that tells me to eat a USB. Anyway, I'll see you in the next one, assuming that I haven't electrocuted myself.